Hi, welcome back. In this episode we're going to create the game loop and by the end of the video you should have the average FPS being printed out to your console. So we're going to go into our game.java folder, you can find that here. And we see here the onCreate method. This is called when the app is created and the activity starts. And right now it extends action bar activity. We're just going to make that extend activity. But we want to import activity, so we're going to hit Alt Enter. And right there, activity is imported. And we're going to set some stuff up. So first, we want to set the screen to full screen. The activity is going to be full screen. Alt enter to import window manager. Copy and paste that right there. And we also want to turn off the title. So turn title off. And now we come to the most important part, set content view. So what content is this activity showing right now in the view? Well, it's actually showing this XML file right here that says hello world that was automatically created when you created your project. So we're going to delete this. And we're going to set the content view to new a new instance of game panel. We're going to pass this as the context. So what is a game panel? Well, we haven't created it yet, but we're going to create a new class for game panel and it's going to extend surface view going to be where most of the game is going on. So we're going to go to new Java class, name this game panel, and it's still red even though we created class. So we want to extend surface view, import surface view, and implements surfaceholder.callback. So now our game panel is basically a type of surface view. And we're going to create our constructor. Constructor is the method that's automatically called when you create the object. When you construct the object, the constructor is called. So, And we're going to pass the context into this constructor as a parameter. See how over here you have this? Well, this is the context. It's passing this entire class into here as the context when the game panel is created. First thing we want to do is call the super class, which is surface view. We want to call surface views constructor, and we're going to pass the context into surface views constructor. And we're going to add the callback to the surface holder so we can intercept events, mouse or button presses, finger press events on the phone.
Now we're going to override some of the methods that are in surface view. So we're going to override the surface changed method. the surface destroyed method. And lastly, we're going to override the surface created method. And everything looks good, no more red. That's really good. So now, we're going to override one more, the on touch event. motion event. Here we go. And this requires that you return something. So return a boolean. So we're going to do just going to put this here for now. So now we need a thread. new class and we'll just call this main thread and we'll have this this is where a game loop is actually going to go and we'll have this extend try to guess what it extends thread So we want to cap our FPS at 30. So we'll create FPS. Average FPS. Import surface holder. Create a reference to a game panel object and a running boolean. Import canvas. So now we're going to make the constructor. First thing we're going to do in the constructor is cl call the superclass thread, and we're going to we're going to call the constructor of the superclass like super, and we're going to set the surface holder reference here to the surface holder that's passed in through the constructor. Same for the game panel. Now we're going to override the run method inside of the class thread.
And what we're going to try to do here in our game loop is cap the FPS at 30. So I'll try to explain how this works. It's a little bit complicated. But I'm going to type out all the code first. So this is your target time, which should be 1000 over 30, which is the FPS. And this should be in milliseconds how long you want, how many milliseconds you want each game loop, each, uh, what do you call it, each time you run through the game loop you want it to take 1000 over 30 milliseconds. So while you're running, you're going to get your start time in nanoseconds. So your start time, set the canvas to null. try and lock the canvas. And this is going to be the meat of our program, the two lines that make everything work. Right here, update and draw. Every time you go through the game loop, you're going to update the game once, and you're going to draw the game once. And the game loop is going to be called so fast, hopefully 30 times a second, that you will it will flow naturally. And then because this is in try, we're going to catch. Alright, you have to pass the canvas in. So now that we've gone through one circle of updating and drawing, I want to get the time in milliseconds. So the nanoseconds minus the start time right here right here is how many nanoseconds it took to update and draw the game once we're going to divide that by a million So this is the milliseconds now, how long it took to update and draw the canvas once. And remember, our target is to get each time update and draw goes through is 1 30th of a second. That's the target. So 
So the wait time, how long we're going to wait before going through the loop again, is target time minus the time it took. And now we're going to make the thread wait that wait time. So now that we've waited, by now we should have gone through it once, and it took 1 30th of a second. The frame count goes up by 1. If the frame count... Now if this happens 30 times, so if the frame count equals FPS, 30, then we're going to calculate the average FPS. set the frame count to zero and the total time to zero. And we're just going to have here print out the average FPS. So every time the frame count gets to 30, we're going to print out the average FPS to the console. So we haven't created the update method yet. I'm just going to do that here. And now we need somewhere to start the thread. So we'll start it in the surface created. First we're going to create the reference up here. And then when the surface is created, safely start the game loop. And over here we just need to add one more method. stop the thread when the surface is destroyed. That makes sense, right? Start it when the surface is created, stop it when the surface is destroyed. Not literally destroyed, but no longer there. And sometimes it could take multiple attempts to stop the thread. So we're going to put it in a loop and a try catch.
So it's going to try to stop the thread, set it running to false, and join. And if it does not succeed, it will go to this catch block and the loop will retry again. If it does succeed, it will skip this catch block and go right to retry equals false, exit the loop, and you stop the thread successfully. And one last thing we have to do is instantiate the thread. We're passing this holder to it and this as the game panel. to true so it can handle events. And if we run this, we should have our game loop running and have the average FPS being printed out for us. So I'm going to post this code up, so if you have problems you can copy and paste it, compare it to your own code. Okay, exception. Alright, that's bad. here we're going to add a finally block which is always executed regardless of if the catch is executed canvas is not null As I was saying, I'm going to upload this code, so if you have problems you can compare it to your own. Alright, no exceptions, that's good.
looks like our average FPS is being printed out. Now the emulator is pretty slow, but on an actual phone, it would probably be a lot to the point where we would have to cap it at 30. But here in the emulator, it's under 30. And this is our surface view. Nothing's actually there yet. So thanks for watching. And in the next episode, we're going to create our background.